Hi everybody, this is Ellie. Thanks so much for joining me today. I'm excited because today's video is a collab with Cecilia at Scientist Plans and Jackie at Quote the Crow. We thought it would be fun to talk about how we've been using our Hobonichis in 2022 in preparation for the upcoming Hobonichi launch. Cecilia is going to chat about how she is using her Hobonichi Weeks. Jackie is going to touch on the Hobonichi Weeks, the A6, and the Cousin, so you'll get the full spectrum there. And I'm going to share my Hobonichi A6, which, as you may know, I've been using as a journal and memory keeper this year. I will link both Cecilia and Jackie's channels and videos down below, so please do check them out. It's so fun to see how people are actually using their planners or journals, as the case may be. And let's dive into this guy. So I have a couple of videos on this journal, which I will link the playlist, but I use my Hobonichi A6 as a journal and memory keeper, and I have it in this gorgeous cover. This is from Sojourner. It is a trifolio with a little bit of extra width added. It's the Enoch leather with the speck brown pocket, and I absolutely love it. It feels and smells so good still. A lot of times I actually just leave this out of the cover now though, because it is getting so thick. Here you go, you can see, so unused pages, what I've used. And oh, one more note on this leather is that there is a transfer, so you can see it here on, well, just the back page, because I don't slip the front one in. But that doesn't bother me at all. You can see there's a little bit here, more here. It's just a characteristic of the leather. But like I said, I don't always keep it in here because I do need to pull it out at this stage and fold it onto itself when I'm journaling. I'll show you what that means in a little bit. So for 2022, I went back to an A6 size. In 2021, I had the Cousin, which I loved. I love those weekly layouts, but I was finding the A5 daily pages to be too much space for my style of journaling and memory keeping. And it just felt overwhelming and was really hard for me to get into sometimes. So I remembered that my very favorite journal of all time was my very first Hobonichi, which was the A6 English version in 2019, I believe. And I had so much fun with that that I wanted to dive back in this year, and it turned out to definitely be the right decision for me. I love the dated pages, even though a lot of them will end up blank by the end of the year. I just like having that dedicated space to get into every day if I want to. Or to be fair, when I'm journaling, I don't journal on a daily basis because this is a more creative memory keeper slash journal for me. I tend to wait until I have a fair amount of time, usually at least an hour to spread out, get out all my stickers, my washi, whatever I'm using at the time and do a bunch of pages at once. It's just easier and more inviting to me that way. The thought of having to pull out my supplies, do, you know, a small spread and then put them all away is, is honestly just, it's a little too much for me. Sometimes I'm too lazy for that. So it's easier to do it in batches. So this size feels very, very manageable to me. I did go with the full year. To be honest, sometimes this level of fluff does bother me when I'm trying to write, but I did see years ago, well, when I first found the community, I guess, someone's tip that you can fold it back onto itself. So when you just open it, like it's so well made, you can basically just fold it however you need to, oops, to make a level surface. And this helps a ton. So even though there might be a small irritation every once in a while, for the most part, that solves any of the issues that I do have. And I really enjoy having this all in one year. I did the Hobonichi A6 Avec one year, and I don't know what happened that year. That just wasn't a consistent journaling year. I wasn't excited about it really at all. And I think there's, you know, some spreads in each of the notebooks, but I just, I really love having a contained book at the end of the year. 
that said, there was something really, really fun about starting. Oh, when I had the cousin, I did the EVEC too. So it was really nice to feel like I had a fresh start in the middle of the year and kind of get to decorate my cousin with my style at the time. But overall, right now, I am really, really feeling one calendar year in one book. So I am thinking I will do the same for 2023. I'm actually thinking I might do the Japanese version. I've talked a lot about how I love the grid size here, four millimeter. I do, that's probably my favorite grid size if I had to design my own notebook. But I do like how the Japanese grid goes all the way up to the top here. This is such a small thing, but this just feels like a weird header space that I wanna fill. And I, sometimes I have trouble making my page feel balanced. So I don't know, I might try it out. I also like the idea of being able to hand letter the days of the week in the Japanese version. I know I could do that here too, but it does feel a little bit redundant since it already says Wednesday there or whatever day it is. So we will see, but I do plan on sticking with the A6 size Techo for sure and the full calendar year for sure. That being said, it is towards the end of August now. I believe it's the 26th, so things could change. I will quickly go through the sections again and how I use them. If you've been following me or watched my other videos, nothing new here. Guys, I still have not touched these pages at all. I do think I might go in and put quotes, but you know what? It, it probably won't happen. That's okay though. So I use a sticker a day for a memory here. I love this. I have just been doing this at the end of every month. So again, I just, I pull out my planner and I go through it. The great thing about keeping notes in my planner as well is that it really gives me a summary of the day and it's very easy for me to choose a memory. And it's just fun. This takes about 15, 20 minutes, depending on if I'm just doing this, if I'm watching TV, whatever the case may be. But it's always really fun and relaxing to do these spreads. And it's just so much fun to actually use my stickers. And then of course, I do write little captions here just to help jog future Ellie's memory. So I just have the rest of the monthly scripts down. Those are from Planner Monkey Co. In whatever journal I'm using and planner, I always like to put my word of the year and the goals. I come up with my goals using the Cultivate What Matters power sheets, which I really love and will be getting again in 2023. And then we get right into my daily pages. So the beginning of each month has a coming up page. And this year I have decided to stamp a quote or just words that are meaningful to me at the time on that page and I love how that has turned out. I have already done a flip through of January through April so if you want to check out kind of a detailed flip do see those videos that I've linked but let me get to May which you haven't seen yet and to be honest with you is where my journaling kind of became a little bit more sporadic. My style of journaling is, like I said, it's memory keeping. It's more documenting what has happened than how I'm feeling. I personally find that when I flip back through my journals, I really like to see the small and big things that have made up my days. I like reminiscing. I enjoy getting that glimpse, whether it's something really exciting, something sad, something mundane in the middle, like most things are. I just love having it in the pages. And then of course, I love to use whatever little decoration styles I'm into at the time. For me, it's usually a little bit of washi and some stickers. I love practicing hand lettering now. So these pages are a reflection of that. And I will journal a little bit. I will of course jot down how I'm feeling about something, but I don't use this A6 as a place to kind of vent my feelings or work through anything. I have a morning pages book if I need to do that. This is, well, yeah, a memory keeper. It's just collecting my memories. I don't have a great memory, so this honestly just feels like such a joy to flip through. So here's the quote I stamped this month, and you'll see, so some pages, like, this is just basically a point form list of things that day, grilled cheese, I listened to a podcast, watched the Jays. 
my May washi tape palette. I ordered a couple of shirts and I like the tag. Here's some journaling here. Practicing some hand lettering using some stickers. Got my new mild liners, the mild set. No, is that what they're called? Oh, the neutral set and whatever this one is. Hard to see in here. How we celebrated Mother's Day. My grandparents' garden. Oh, this was my first Happy Day uh, subscription kit. It was so cute. I couldn't resist the bookworm. <laughs> Make Happy Day. Always, always glad to support. <laughs> oh, this was an Instagram story that seemed to resonate with a lot of people. So just printed it out and wrote a little bit about that. So you'll see, like this just says self-compassion. Oh, I have recently pulled out my watercolors. I've been talking so much with Maria at A Papery Life and she's just been so inspiring and it's so fun to, you know, use the art supplies that I have and just try things. They're not going to be perfect, but I love this. I can look at this and remember exactly the time that my brother bought a pie from a farm and it was delicious. We've got some, lay oh yes, I used, my mom has a label maker from probably at least 15 years ago and I used it for something. So I just wanted to print out the different styles, I guess, for reference for next time if I ever needed to. A screenshot, hand lettering a quote here. Some London gifties, stationery from Dakshina. And we get into blank pages. So one of the things I did want to talk about is what I do when I go through a length of time and do not touch my journal. Because if I was sporadic in May, I was pretty much totally absent in June and July. And I will be honest, part of the reason I got back into it even as much as I have is because I knew this video was coming up and there were some things that I did want in here. So I'm thankful for that because left to my own devices, sometimes I just won't do it. So it's nice for me to have the chance to share it with you guys because it helps keep me slightly more on track. That said, this is also the reality. There's going to be blank pages in any of my journals and I am okay with that. But what I do if I'm coming back to my journal after a long absence, is I have set up a little system. It's it's not even a system, guys. It's nothing as coherent or planned as that, but I figured out a method that works for me. So what I will do first is make sure that I start where I am. When I first opened this back up in August, the temptation was to go back to June and start back planning from there. And as you can imagine, that was totally overwhelming for me. There were so many blank pages. There were months that I had to think through and I was like, nope, I'm going to start right now where I am and move forward. If at any point I am inspired to go backwards, that is fine. If not, also fine. But if I waited until I felt motivated or ready to go back through two or three months of memory keeping, you know, I'd be sitting here in October still, still looking at a, a whole bunch of blank pages. So I start where I am and see where that takes me. Usually because like I said, I have all my supplies spread around me, I will end up going backwards and I don't pressure myself too heavily. So what I do is, so where are we here? We're in May. So I will take my planner this year. It's the Wonderland 222. The B6 size, I love this thing. Last year it was my bullet journal. It works the same because I plan the same way. So usually my planner contains tasks and it also contains bits of memory keeping in point form notes. So this is enough to jog my memory. When I'm in a blank grouping of pages, so for example, if it was the beginning of May or all of May, I go through my journal and I just look through anything that I know I want to keep. Any special memories or just funny memories, anything that I want in here, I will go ahead and just do those pages. I will skip around. I might have two entries in May, you know, five in June, one in July. Totally fine. I get those big ones down first 
And then with the rest of the blank pages, if I want to go back through and, you know, hand letter in a quote or maybe tip in any ephemera, do some washi swatches, play with watercolors, any of that I will do on the rest of the pages. And a lot of the times I don't even bother. I just leave it totally blank. So that's my approach to catching up in my journal because I do find that I need it to be manageable for me. Manageable and, and honestly realistic. So here, oh, this, see this for example, Dakshin has sent me some samples. I'm pretty sure this was at the end of 2021, but I never ended up tipping this in. So I thought, you know what? I have these blank pages in May. I know I wanted to keep her note and some of these swatches together in my journal. So I went ahead and did that. Same with Cecilia. She sent me some happy mail. I've kept her little emoji for again, months. She didn't send this in May. This was probably towards the beginning of this year, but I had it, I had blank pages, put it in. And of course, because this was Cecilia's page, it is all in shades of blue. Here we go, more blank pages. And then we get into June. One thing I have been consistent about is coming in and stamping every month. I just really, really love recording the words that are speaking to me. And it's funny because I made a little reel just with these quote pages. And looking back, I can see kind of exactly what I was feeling and what I was needing at the time based on the quotes that I chose. So here we are, used a stencil, did a little sketch. June's washi palette, getting to practice with some brush pens. Oh, so this page here, when I talked about loving having dated pages, this is one of the reasons that I love it. When I was going back through my journal, I saw this just hilarious little jot note that I'd made. And if I had an undated journal, I don't think this would have felt like something I would feel I needed to long form journal about, or even just, you know, get in there for but because I already had the space for it and I flipped through the page and saw it I was like yes when my parents went on vacation I was taking care of the plants outside and you know I don't have a green thumb I have used a hose before guys but we had one that was newer and anyways anyways day one I ended up having to message my brother and be like uh what's going on with the water? Is this hose working? And he had to FaceTime me from work and show me how to turn it on. And anyways, not my finest moment, but it is hilarious. And I wanted it in here as soon as I saw it in my planner. So having this space makes even those like tiny moments ha have a chance to be documented. And I love it. Glad it's in here. Oh, this was what I first brought my watercolors out for. This episode of Stranger Things just got me, guys. I thought it was beautiful and heart-wrenching, and I liked kind of trying to make the background that brought me right into that scene. And of course, the lyrics that feel like they've just been playing on repeat in my head this summer. First swim. Played with the watercolors a little more here. So I realized that Lego is a great kind of fidget for me. I have trouble sitting still sometimes or not even sitting still, but just being focused on one thing. If anxiety is high, I just am constantly looking for distractions. And usually the default for me is picking up my phone and checking it, even though there's nothing that I'm looking for. And that is a habit that I'm really trying to break, especially if I'm watching something because then I'm missing, I'm missing what's happening. So I realized this summer that Lego is a great way for just my hands to be busy and they're busy enough that my mind can focus on the screen and what's happening. And luckily we still have all of my brother's old Lego sets. So I just made myself a little container and keep it by the TV. So that's what that page is. There you go. See lots of blank pages, some journaling, these here, all blank. So this is also turning into obviously a little bit of a flip through. I love this quote and this song and this Kintsugi washi tape is from Note and Wish. It's just one of my favorites. Oh, this was another kit that I got from Happy Daya. 
Actually, this one was really fun because not only is it a beautiful kit, but I made the spread almost as soon as I got it. And usually my temptation is to just put everything away and, and you know, save it for, I, I don't know why, just, just to save it because it's so beautiful. But I used this right away and it felt really good. So this is a really sweet spread. I love the soft colors here. Oh, some butter tarts. Yum. Oh, July's theme was Harry Potter based and these are the washies that I chose to go with it. So again, a lot of this, a lot of my memory keeping, I like to just kind of do hand lettering to make the big things pop a little bit. Uh, my custom cover from Mansoura Atelier. I do have a video on this too, but I wrote down the specifics that I had asked for here. I do have it in my email, but you know, us, us who love stationery like to keep things on paper as well. So I have that in here. Really happy with that cover still, guys. It's absolutely gorgeous. This is my stationery stockpile challenge July dashboard. So that's a collab that I do with Dakshina. We have a whole playlist and it's such a great way to use stickers. So that is something that I also keep in this journal. Oh, some baseball tournament stuff from July. Oh, those pages got full. Ah, and this is when I had the meetup in Toronto. So with Cecilia, Maria, and Dale. Dale is at Plot Loves Paper, A Papery Life, Scientist Plans. It was so much fun. I used some of the goodies that I got from them, put the pictures in, a tip in. See, again, you can kind of see the big things jump out, paper plus cloth, wonder pens. We sat and chatted, Toronto. I loved making this spread. Oh, I got this stamp at paper plus cloth and it was perfect there, I thought. And then a whole bunch of blank pages, so. Here we go. Will I go through and fill these up? I don't know, maybe, maybe not. What do we have here? Oh, my brother's girlfriend and I had a girl's day. It was so much fun. We just watched three super cheesy movies and ordered a bunch of sushi and had chocolate croissants and it was just such a nice day. And then we come into August. Had my first video, sorry I've been well, pretty much, pretty much missing in August. We had family coming and staying with us. And I mean, we're already a full household of six. So having more people here was nice, but also like really, really full. And my introvert heart was a little bit overwhelmed. But anyways, it was a nice visit and they have since gone back home. So hopefully I can get into a more regular routine. What do we have here? My August palette, all of these kind of sunset colors. Some Note and Wish washi tape. They have some of my favorite. I showed this on Instagram stories, I think, but this one is like a clear tape and it's just beautiful. And just look at all those neutrals. It's, I love it. This will go with pretty much all of the washi that I have. This one here, again, just point form notes, just to keep it in the memory. We have talked about the day. We had lunch out. We went to baseball. That's the farewell dinner. And I ordered a couple of washi tapes from Hannah at Sweet Freckled Designs and some stickers as well. So I just did some swatches there. I love her card with her. With her kind of affirmation words on it. And I believe that is the last one. Yeah, so this, I think this is where I start. Well, no, I might've been a little earlier in, in August, but like I said, started in August, worked my way back through May, I think. And yeah, as you saw, tons and tons of empty pages in between. And it's funny because when I'm trying to catch up, I sometimes think about how many empty pages there are. But when I'm flipping through here with you guys, or even even on my own but right now when I'm flipping through here with you guys I'm not thinking oh no look at all these empty pages I'm just super excited to come up on the next completed one so it's a reminder like these aren't meant to be perfect it's okay to have blank pages and pages that you know just have a couple things stuck down no writing it's whatever you want it to be and need it to be and it should just be an enjoyable process and not something that 
brings you pressure or stress or anything like that. So that is how I am using my Hobonichi this year. At the end here, let's see, we just have some, yep, yeah, just some pen swatches. I also just use these kind of pages here, just sometimes if I'm comparing colors or something. I'm not precious with these. I, I don't use them for anything else, so. Oh, here I was doing some Tombow swatching. I haven't kept up with that. I think this is just as I use them, so I guess I stop there and and, <laughs> and that's that. But I love this. I love how fluffy it is getting. It feels great in the hand, and it's just fun to see it in the profile like this. And yeah, A6 is a great size. It's been great for me. Might be too small for some people, might be too big for some people. It just depends on what you're looking for right now. And while we're here, I just wanted to talk about some other Hobonichi accessories that I've been loving and using this year. So for me, what do we have? Okay, the Uni Jetstream pen, always. I love the ones that come with it. I, I mean, I order ones from Tokyo Pen Shop too. I just love the Uni Jetstream pens. So that is one of my favorite accessories from Hobonichi. I love their memo notebooks. So this one here I'm using just to keep track of the ink I have in my fountain pens, which I mean, I have not inked up my pens in months. So this hasn't been updated, but great little notebook. I also have one in the back of my B6. I cut this one down from A5 size and it is a budget planner. So these are just so, so versatile. I'll probably get some more of these in 2023 to have on hand. Love this little weekly supplement. I use it to track what I'm reading. I don't think I'm going to continue with this though. It's going to be easier for me to just have one notebook to track probably for years at a time, but I will probably get one of these. I find it so handy just to be able to throw in your purse and just to have that overview. Oh, this one's not even my reading tracker, guys. Okay, so I have two of these. One is a reading tracker. This one is one that I was using for memory keeping. I had so much fun with these spreads, but I just didn't keep up with them. Again, I might start again. It'll go really nicely with my journal because it gives that overview, but this is where I stopped in March. So either way, super fun, super portable. I will probably get one or two of these again. And the other things that I have used and love this year are these folders. So I have them in the A6 size and I also have them in the A5 size here. I just keep them in my pouches to organize stickers and ephemera. And I just find them so handy and thin and durable that I will definitely be getting a few more sets of these this year. So I've looked at the Hobonichi release. I I'm not, everything's beautiful, of course. Like there's a lot of really fun things. I'm still not 100% sure on my actual system next year, but likely for me, the Hobonichi will just be my journal. I did get a Weeks this year. I haven't used it. I'm not sure if I'm going to at this point. Maybe not. Maybe it'll just kind of be a notebook with extra Tamoe River paper at some point, which is fine. I might still end up getting a Weeks for 2023. That tends to be one of my kind of indulgent purchases. For some reason, it just feels to me like the ultimate backup. Like if everything else fails, that one small system can do everything. So we'll see. But as far as I know, I will be getting the accessories I mentioned, an A6 planner, I do really love the A6 Polar Bear cover. I, I don't remember the official name right now, but I just think it's so minimal and so beautiful. But we'll see. I'm, I just have to think about whether or not I want to hope another Hobonichi cover, whether or not I'll use it, and go from there. I hope you enjoyed kind of this flip through and chat about my Hobonichi A6 Memory Keeper so far this year. It was fun to share with you guys and just to think through how I've been using it and, you know, really remind myself that it's okay that it's not, 
I don't know, perfect, complete. I mean, neither of those things is, is even a goal of mine. So I don't know where this kind of pressure comes from or even language, but it is a tool for me to capture the moments, good, bad, small, big, everything in between. And for that, it has been working so, so well. I am really looking forward to seeing Cecilia and Jackie's videos. Again, please do go check them out. They are both so creative and we all have different uses and different styles and it's just, it's just fun to see how everybody uses their planners and all the goodies that come along with them. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. This ended up being longer than I expected, but was really, really fun. I would love to know what, if anything, you're planning on ordering from Hobonichi for 2023. So if you'd like, you can go ahead and drop that in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.